Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in Digital Electronics Playlist. In today's tutorial, we'll talk about tabular method to minimize digital logic circuits. This method is also known as the Quinn McCluskey method. If you watched my previous video, you should be able to solve this question using K-maps. This is a particular case of solving a question using K-maps of four variables. An output that depends upon A, B, C, D inputs has main terms 0 1 3 7 8 9 11 and 15 if you wish to solve this question using this new tabular method which requires a lot of concentration during computation uh, we need to write down all the main terms on one side and write down its binary equivalent so 0 is represented using 0 0 0 0 1 is represented using 0, 0, 0, 1. 3 is 0, 0, 1, 1. And similarly, you can populate this entire table like this, where 15 is 1, 1, 1, 1. 11 is 1, 0, 1, 1, and so on. The idea here is to see how many 1s are appearing in the numbers. For example, the minimum 1 has just 1, 1, and uh, the minimum 8 also has 1 1 so they'll fall into one group so there are two ones in 3 and two ones in 9 so they'll fall into one group there are three ones in 7 and 11 so they'll fall into one group and there are four ones in 15 that will fall into one group and zero of course falls into a group with no ones in it so the next step involves that you need to make up a table like this where the first column is group so as i mentioned zero will represent those numbers that do not have any ones one will represent those numbers that will have just one occurrence of one similarly two will have two ones three will have three ones one four will have four ones in front of zero i'll write down its min term and its binary equivalent zero 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 for a b c d this group one will have m1 and m8 because these two main terms have just one one in their binary representation so this table is filled up like this so you write down the main terms you write down their binary equivalent next to it then m3 will have 0, 0, 1, 1, 9 will have 1, 0, 0, 1, and so on. So the step number one is to populate this table. Now the step number two is a little trickier. Now what you need to do is you need to compare elements of each nth group with its next group. by that i mean that you need to compare the elements of zeroth group with the first group the first group with the second group the second group with the third group and the third group with the fourth group and you will not compare the elements of zeroth group to any other group like the second group or the third group or the fourth group so consecutive groups are being compared and how do you compare them you you'll compare m0 with m1 and m0 with m8 similarly you'll compare m1 with m3 m1 with m9 so just look at these arrows how how i'm comparing each element of uh, one group to all the other elements of the other groups so this is the time consuming process and if you compare the two elements or the two min terms of different groups and you find just one change of bit for example if you compare m0 with m1 you see that a is 0 which is not changing b is 0 for both the min terms c is 0 for both the min terms only d is changing from 0 to 1 so there is one change so they'll form a matched pair in our step number 2 so you'll write down all the matched pairs m0 m1 becomes a matched pair because there was only one change of bit and how do you represent that change of bit you'll say 0 0 0 dash the bit that that is changing is representing using dash and all the other bits are represented using 
written as they are and similarly you'll find that m0 and m8 also change in the most significant bit a a is 0 here and is 1 here as the three bits are 0 so I put a dash triple 0 here and if you find more than one change you do not write them as matched pairs for example you do not write m8 with m3 because you see that this is changing this is same so this is also changing this is also changing so there are three changes so you will not write m8 and m3 as a group here so you write down all the matched pairs with just one change of element or bit so that's how you populate this table you can pause this video and uh, note down and I'll suggest that you find out uh, the matched pairs for yourself and then compare it with this table and then we'll compare these matched pairs in one group with the matched pairs of the other group so the first matched pair of zeroth group will be compared to the first matched pair of the first group so again we'll have a lot of combinations and if you see more than one change you do not write them as the next group so you do it like this for each element and you'll find that in step 3 m0 m1 m8 and m9 they uh, there's just one change here then a zero and a zero and dash is matched with a dash so a dash will only match with a dash zero will match with zero one will match with one and uh, if there is a change which just one change is allowed so you put a new dash there and in this form also you'll write down all the matched pairs now please understand while making these matched pairs I've put a tick mark nest to it because I can see that M0, ha M0 has made a pair in in the next step so if M0 has made a pair M1 has made a pair M8 has made a pair all the min terms are involved in making a pair so I have put a tick mark nest to that's one good practice because if some min term is left out and is not making a pair then we need to tackle it at a later stage as an essential prime implicant this question for the case of simplicity uh, i'm not taking up that case now once we are on the step number three where no further matching is possible so you can see if i try to match the first pair with the first pair of the other group uh, this dash is common the zero is common then there is a change then there is a change so we, i cannot match these elements anymore so this becomes my final step so i will not match it any further and once the matching stops then we need to write down reduced expressions from this binary representation where dash will say that we omit that uh, variable and a zero will say that we put a bar next to it on top of it and c will be represented using c bar so we do not write a we do not write c in this case we write b bar and d because d is one in both the cases b is zero in both the cases so we write b bar and d and similarly in the third case you can see it's it's clearly c remaining one one d remaining one one so i write down c d so my reduced expression is b bar c bar plus b bar d plus c d but this is not the minimized expression we are just left with one step or prime implicants and from these prime implicants we'll find essential prime implicants although you can realize the same circuit using this expression also but this will not be the minimized circuit so from prime implicant table we'll find essential prime implicants so write down all the prime implicants here 
and out of these prime implicants we'll find out what are essential prime implicants so for that what you do is you write down prime implicants you write down the main terms involved in those prime implicants so please see now instead of matching pair we say what all main terms were involved so we can see that b bar c bar involves 0 1 8 and 9 so I write down 0, 1, 8 and 9 min terms. B bar D involves 1, 3, 9 and 11. And C D involves 3, 7, 11 and 15 from here. All those min terms which are involved, I have written down all the min terms here also in a tabular format. So I put a cross next to them. So B bar C bar involves 0, 1, 8 and 9 b bar d involves 1 3 9 and 11 and this involves c d involves 3 7 11 and 15 now our next step is to see which column has just one cross so i can see that 0 has just one cross and then 7 has just one cross, 8 has just one cross and 15 has just one cross. Now if you examine closely in order to in order to include 0 and 8 min terms we essentially need to include b bar c bar because 0 and 8 are not being covered by any other min term. So b bar c bar becomes my essential prime implicant and in order to include 7 and 15 I'll need to include CD it also becomes my essential prime implicant and all the other min terms if you say 1 1 is being included by B bar C bar so there is no need of including B bar D because all the min terms which are being included by B bar D are either being included by B bar C bar or CD so this can be omitted and our final expression for y becomes b bar c bar plus c d and if you want to verify this you can also verify it using the k math k map let's look at this you can draw the k map fill in the min term 0 1 3 7 15 11 4 and 8 the first pairing is th these four ones which will give us c d and the next pairing is these four ones they'll give us b bar c bar so this is verified using both the methods so this is what the tabular method or the quinn mccluskey method is you can extend this method to five variable uh, problems and six variable problems also and that was it for today i hope you liked the video if you did give it a thumbs up consider subscribing i'll see you around take care bye bye